Hi there, my name is Amy Murphy and today I'm teaching you a sequence that I've entitled Deep Flow because we of course have a Deep Flow class scheduled at our studio every Sunday at 10 a.m. and it's a popular class and it's a really fun class. Yesterday I taught an especially good one so I wanted to capture that, really encapsulate it and send it home with you. And I'm in my house today because it is a snow day so the studio is closed. Um, so yes, deep flow. Uh, I'll reveal to you where I'm going to take you. I wouldn't do that if I was teaching you um, typically like at the studio, but right now I'll just tell you where we're going. I'm going to get you into some arm balances, some standing balances, and side crow in particular, and we'll end with a little bit of camel pose. So yeah, I hope that you feel nice and primed for all of those great shapes. You will find that um, there's a lot of detail in the beginning that, of this class. The first 10 minutes are always really uh, the fruit, the, the requirement, the, all of the, the blueprinting that your body needs, and then it gets a little bit more playful once those 10 minutes have, have gotten you in your proper place. So, uh, so enjoy the slow start, and then enjoy the play, enjoy the whole thing. Uh, it starts in child's pose. So you can begin with knees wide. Big toes touch. Your first few moments relatively passive, just allow yourself to feel the floor. You recognize the weight of your head on your mat or on your floor, the print of your forehead is obvious and Know that there's so little space between you and the floor, so do your best to make that very humid. Get warm in your breath. Find small yet significant shoulder adjustments. Allow your elbows to wing out just a little bit. When your elbows go out, your shoulders are gonna crash in closer towards center line, closer to throat. To change the arms dramatically, the elbows are now bent. Keep them bent, swoop the arm bones down towards the floor. So the back side, the tricep side of your arm now faces more properly down. Re-straighten your arms, feel the turning edges of your shoulder blades constantly clipping themselves down towards the floor. Wide armpits is a good cue. Your fingers get grabby, your shoulder blades get wide, your armpits hollow, armpits wide and down. Keep the nice fixation of the shoulder blades on your back. Step your hands as far as you can to your right. So feel that you do get some sensation in the left side of your body. Replace your head down even, even if it does not quite touch. Maybe another tricep wrap. To prep and prime your rib cage and the way that it moves around your spine, you'll stay with a very heavily clipped left hip, the hip that you're walking away from. Let your left fingers bend like so, so you're stacked up on the left hand, your elbow is pointed up. In direct timing, in direct consultation with your breath, use an inhale to peekaboo the chest, the left rib cage up, so the left butt stays seated down but you turn that sleeve of the left side body open and up. Then with greater strength, greater weight, greater reference than before, you really drag your left arm, your left armpit back down. That's what you do on breath. Inhale, elbow tips up, rib cage opens. Exhale, bring your armpit back down, get heavy in your arm bone. Breathe in and open. Breathe out and close. You might even begin to feel the belly wrapping its way up, but the left thigh bone stays down. Breathe in, tilt open. Breathe out, armpit down. Do one more floss, peel left rib cage, left chest, left elbow up, and then shrink them down. With very heavy arms, walk a little farther over if there was slack made within those flosses. You take it up. Butt stays in place, you slowly switch sides, 
you'll get a better view of my, my right side body here. I step all the way to my left. This right thigh bone stays heavily pinned down. Both armpits shrug down so that my, my ears, my shoulders, my neck are not crowded. There's a downward energy. To begin the floss, right fingers tent up like so, the right elbow gets perky. Led by an inhale, I inhale to turn chest up towards the ceiling. I exhale to pin this right elbow back down, square my chest, or even more than square it, really dip the right arm and arm, bo arm bone armpit down. Breathe in to open. Breathe out to shrug the armpit down. We'll do three more. Breathe in, break chest free and open. Breathe out to pull armpit, arm bone down. Breathe in, open it up. Breathe out, ground down. Last one, expose that right edge of the body. Keep your hips planted and consistent. This time when this arm, arm bone pulls down, you stay. If there's slack, you walk farther left. And step hands back through center. Currently, you are still in this priming phase of your practice. Slow, controlled, printing information in. My body is up a little bit. I walk my knees together, discreetly changing the shape of cat, or child's pose. Sorry, Both armpits, the double whammy of that tricep wrap down. I'm rather close to my deeply bent legs, but somewhere in there, there's a gap of my belly up. I call it a tear, teardrop shape of your belly slowly looping away from your deeply bent hips. Think of that here. Begin to pressurize the tops of the feet. Maybe when the shins and the toes go harder down into the floor, it results in the belly rising higher up towards spine, towards ceiling. And then pull into your first very muscular cat pose. Because my arms were so long, they're already ahead of my shoulders. That's great. If yours aren't, let your hands step a little bit forward. Think of winding the body up. Think of making tension so that you can release it. Let's go right back to that child's pose. Tops of the toes hard, shin bones hard, guts up. This time stay in a cat pose that builds, gets more structurally sound over time. Push strong into your fingertips. See your kneecaps moving just a little bit up. The crotch of the pants widening out. Let's stay muscular and humid for three. Really push into the floor, grab the guts up for two, and then to literally release some heat, begin to plow the thigh bones forward towards your ribs. As I'm moving the heads, the, the front creases of my shoulders open, I fall into upward dog, not without control. Call this grounded upward dog, the knees stay in place. Let's just do two more like that. Grab the chin and push to cat pose, a fleeting cat. Lean to child's pose, purposely, or Letting the body wind up. Cat pose for a strong, solid count of three. Muscle it up, heat it up for two, and then release that very heat. Lay into your grounded up dog. Curvature shoulders open. Shift your eyes gently. Last time, chin tucks, your cat shape. Ends of your fingers should be bent. Tops of the feet are heavy. Guts are up in your small child's. Cat pose for three. The thigh bones really sticking backwards for two. And then as you come forward, lay the thigh bones into the front wall of your leg muscles, hip creases smile, shoulder creases smile. Tuck your chin smooth through caps. And this time stay in cap, but make it a little more official. So the hands beneath the shoulders, knees under the hips. Then find yourself in more of a neutral spine, more of a tabletop position. Touch your thumbs together or almost together to narrow the stance of your arms. Take your, the back side of your right hand onto your forehead. The movement that we are about to do in our right rib cage resembles and mocks the floss that you did in your side bent child's pose. Left hand stays muscular, left armpit stays muscular. Both thighs are solid within the base of your legs. 
And now begin to stick the right elbow up. It's a little salute, so you can see it's that same peekaboo of the, the skin of the right body coming up. Keep your guts grounded in and up. Let the elbow point back to its horizon. Just two more like that, prepping the right edge of the body, persuading it to open. Gut stay up, thigh stay strong, elbow horizon. Then stick that elbow up another time. Hang the, uh, keep the elbow up, hang the, the forearm a little bit like so. And then really think of a, a bow and arrow as you start to release the whole stretched out right arm up. And you're just staying in thread the needle. Let the back side of the hand fall beneath you. Feel, witness the wideness of your shoulder blades as your right ear falls down. Let gravity fall into this right shoulder blade. Stay or get a second benefit of the left shoulder as you half bind back of hand to tailbone or perhaps as far as the skin of the right inner thigh. Left hand plants down onto the floor, should it have been lifted, back to tabletop. From your strong base of knees beneath hips, hands beneath shoulders, or hands a little bit more narrow, left nail side of hand goes to left, or goes to center of forehead. Your right arm is holding you up. Your thighs are there. Your belly is mildly gripped. Let your left elbow tilt up, so you're exposing your left body. Your right arm, again, is still solid. Back to a simple horizontal elbow, right back to your start place. Two more, maybe feel your right bicep open as you tilt left elbow up. Take yourself back to that horizon. And do it again, tilt left elbow up. The elbow stays sharp, and there's a bit of a passive hang for the forearm. Now begin to, with tension, bow that arrow up. And then thread the needle on this left arm. Your right hand stays or it can wrap your back. Return your right hand for a down. Both hands to the mat. You find a cat pose exit. Last build up, it's still mocking the shapes that we had started with. Still mocking child's pose and thread the needle. Let your left toes flick out. Maximize the stretch of your right leg back. So left shin is perpendicular. I'm on my right big toe. I bow my right arm across the chest. That's a little bit of a repeat here. I'm gonna move, move for furniture. You might have to as well. The right arm stays up above me. I just work on maximizing this right leg. So you can see I'm on my right big toe. My kneecap is squeezing up. I'm practicing cat pose in my butt. My hips are open towards you. So very upward dog in hips. Very cat pose in your right butt. Flip your right hand towards the side wall or the, the front of the room. And let your hand stretch over your ear. A little bit like your child's pose, you're wrapping your right tricep, you're really shrugging your right shoulder blade down, and now stretch the right foot up. This resembles half moon. And pull your right toes back. Dig into your right heel, stay in place. Then use the arch of your foot to tap down to get this right thigh bone muscled up. Tap the arch of your foot down. With a whole lot of tension, hop your heel back up so your thigh is at about parallel. Do three more arch taps down. Right heel drags up. Twice more, tap down. Float that heel up, feel something happen in the outside of your right butt. Last time, arch taps down. Right leg floats, and now you can get pointed in those right toes yet again. Lean your stretched fingers away from your pointed toes. Maybe open this left bicep. Pump up left side body. You pull yourself into cat pose. It looks like this. The right big toe dangles down. Right arm reaches over the ear. Dangle your wrist until you can pull yourself right into cat. Fingers spread. Push the floorboards away. Hide the guts in and up. Switch sides, your right toes stretch out, your left leg stretches back. 
Stay with just a stacked shoulder for now. The left elbow bows up, pulling that arrow, then the left hand reaches. You perform cat pose in the left butt. Your hips are open as in your upward dog. The front hips. Roll your shoulders open. The collarbones will be wide. Flip top hand, stretch left arm over ear. Then finally you get so consumed in the pointiness of the left toes, the defined, the defined left kneecap, that the leg begins to float. You add a new element of this left glute as you turn it into more of a heel pressure so that the foot, foot changes shape. Five taps, keep the heel engaged, let the arch of the foot lower. With tension, raise your heel back up until you get sensation outside of your hip. Four more, you tap down, float up, down for three, float, twice more, arch taps down, lift, last one, tap it down, then reach it up to stay, return to pointed toes, max out the top arm and the top foot, and then look down, let your bent wrist and your lifted belly start to just warp you into a cat shape. Knees knock together. Let your armpits really do their great wrap. Your biceps are facing front. By the time your toes tuck and you arrive in your downward dog, wide shoulder blades, wide hip crease and a hidden belly. Touch your big toes together in your downward dog. Stretch your right leg up with tension, the same type of tension that you found in those side planks. At the height of this, open your hip and then bend your knee. Keep your fingers clawing the floor for wideness so that we have hips that continuously change in their shape and continue to perform. Our first movement, first big asymmetrical movement from here is to take a knee to armpit. Jab this already bent knee out to the right. Let your eyes just scan forward towards your thumbs. Bump that right arm right up onto your right knee, right up onto your right arm. Guts are up, eyes are focused, fingers are bent. Keep the toes on both feet alert, stick that right knee back up. And just do that one more time. Swivel your knee out to the right. Your arm stay straight as you haul your knee up to your armpit. Bring your knee in towards center, so that might take some backing out. Retuck your chin, haul your belly way up, see how high I am, I am on my left toes, stay for three, get tiny for two, and then look to your thumbs, lift the guts up even higher, back toes even higher, get a quiet footstep. Get soft in the left knee, the back knee, you see I shortened my stance a little bit, that's cool. Dangle your arms, look down. For each inch that my chest, my belly starts to rise up, my butt is falling down. Open your hands really vibrantly towards the wall in front of you. Dig your fingertips down, dig out through your left heel as you then circle your arms up. Your back heel, your left heel is taking a whole lot of weight, but you're not forgetting to pull this left hamstring up towards the ceiling and a little bit back towards the wall behind you. Now you're ready to walk into your right toes. Look to the right and then allow your right arm to fall down towards the mat. Both sides of the heavy, both sides of the body long and strong. Push out through your back heel as you scoop down with this right hand. Pretend you're picking something up. Left heel out, right hand down, and then begin that half circle to tilt the body back up through center. Elbows in tight. Push your chest forward, frame up this front leg. I'll very slowly cue a flip dog. Please stay with the pacing of it. Pull your right heel into your sit bone. Take that right knee back up towards the ceiling. Your three-legged dog with a nice open hip. Right now, my spine bones are kind of in the middle of my trunk. I try to move them more into a cat-like shape. So stilt your left heel up. Let not just the space between your blades, but your middle, your middle back and your upper lower back sh shrug forward like this. Then tilt on, out onto the left heel. Then tend high onto the right fingers. So there's a stall moment here. You start to have a whole lot of air time as your right toes and your right fingers move away from one another. My base heel keeps moving. 
Really squeeze your right hamstring, then land your right heel. The left leg should be straight. The left toes are very fanned. Your right knee is stuck out from your right hip. Chest is extremely broken open. Shoulder blades are not just going down, but they're going in and up like they could break through your chest. Tuck your shin. Start to look where you want to go. So this right hand is reaching, my eyes are reaching with my hand. Come up onto the right heel. Push your right knee up. Keep reaching, keep pushing the right knee high until you find your way around to your three-legged dog. The left heel will eventually point back. Whew. Downward dog. Quick flow between sides. Pike your heels and your sit bones up. Really grab your fingers into the floor. You go from a pointy butt to a dull round one. Jam the chin onto the throat. Let your spine roll up high. You're very high on your toes as you work towards a round plank. And now as you're still looking at your feet, you can see mine, I'm lifted up high onto my toes. Push your heels back a lot. Find that that pulls on a certain cord in the body so that you just shift your eyes. Your neck will naturally lengthen. Keep your arm bones back. Look at or ahead of your hands. Whew. Lower for three. Tight elbows to your sides. You could do this from your knees if you can't manage the arms against the body. Two and one. Untuck the toes to break the chest open even farther. Lace hands behind your back. Keep the feet down. Lift your chest. Locust. The wrists are tight. The elbows are tight. The blades are in and down. Loosen the hands up. Catch them beneath the shoulders. Let's just move through a tabletop. Hands and knees. Tuck toes, downward dock. Keep wrapping your triceps. You're not taking too much on in the neck. Tension the left leg, that same, again, muscular intention that we had practiced when we were working those side planks from the floor. I've pumped my left hamstring in towards my butt. My armpits are still even, so the left arm has to be heavier. For space and for control, I push my knee out to the left. My eyes do scan forward as I bring my knee up to my left armpit. Back toes are perfectly high. Right shin is tight. Circle the knee perceivably wider and higher. Three-legged dog. Whew. Do it one more time. Your eyes will travel as your knee travels up to your left armpit. Then you might back up a little bit as you shrug your guts up, center the knee. I'm now looking at my fingers as I step my foot. So if that chin tuck is held longer, it'll work better. I did it better on the other side. Back knee is down, roll up. As my guts and my chest, my throat get higher, my butt just gets lower. Open your hands, find your crescent lunge on this leg. As my arms strike up, I push not only backwards, but downwards with the right heel. The right hamstring, the thickness of the back of the leg is going not just backwards, but a little bit up. Walk into your left toes. Your arms stay very long. Look left as the left arm dangles down. The right side body stretches up. Then as if to pick something up off of the floor, pull your left fingers down. Begin to stretch up with a heavy right heel. Get a bit muscled in the right shoulder blade as you stand tall. A flip dog, slow but sure on this side. Spill your chest forward. As you begin to frame up your leg, get responsive, get lifted in your guts. Your hands come down. Tuck your chin as in cat, flicker your heel to your sit bone. Discover a big, reliable three-legged dog. Your spine is centered between your front wall and your back wall. Now move your spine into the back wall of your body. Still that right heel up. Move your whole spine forward. Your right toes are already light, so witness that right heel tilt out. Tense your left hand. And then just keep lightening up on that. Right heel goes down, left hand comes up. And then it happens. Push your left hand and your left knee away from one another. Still have a smile in your right collarbone. This hand that's holding you up has to be pumped. To come back out, it starts with the throat and the bend in the left hand. Then the left heel pumps up. 
circle around, your chest is closing, the right toes are changing and turning you into your three-legged dog. Downward dog. Just this first time, we'll, to get to the top of our mats, we'll use a squat pose. So big steps or a float to squat. You might consider looking at the hands before you do this. Make it a prayer squat, a bit of reprieve. Like those knee to armpits right now, both of the hips are wide, so it's happening on left and right, right now. Elbows are heavy, the earlobes are heavy, top of your head is up. Fingertips tent down, stick your butt up. Tuck your chin so that there's no compromise in your neck, no wrinkles in the back of it, waddle the feet together. Bend your legs, standing forward folds. And then you'll just do my typical version of your sun A. So it involves rolling up. Smile your hips and open your hands forward. Your butt is cupped under you. Begin to reach up. I mentioned in flip dog that your shoulder blades not only go down, but they go down and under your chest. Make that a real thing here. Your shoulder blade ends are hooking into your heart. And then spill your chest forward. Let yourself be liberal and messy to right about here, right out here. Bend your legs, teardrop the guts up. You've heard that cue, fold over your legs. Flat back. I love to add a lift in the heels. I definitely promote doing that. It sticks the chest forward and it gets your guts lifted up really high. You don't change this great reference of the wide chest, but you bend your knees so that you can easily access the floor, step, or you could shoot into a low plank. So find the footing, then bend the arms. Low plank is only 90 degrees, so nothing should be down. Flip the feet, and then it's the elbows that pull down, chest tethers up. Bend fingers, shrug the chin onto the throat. Inspired by Budokan, we use a roll up, push super hard into your toes, change your ankles. Flip the feet one at a time, then you won't be constantly readjusting the distance between your hands and your feet. And then don't stay, take big steps or float into flat back. This time feet grounded. Fold down. Keep weight into the toes, roll up. Like your roll up to crescent lunge, the higher your chest goes, the further down your butt goes. Let the hands splay open. Listen to the feeling of your shoulder blades getting underneath you. They're holding your chest up. Push chest into the room, swan dive down. Feel the moment when you have to buckle the knees, teardrop the guts, lay into a fold. Flat back, spread shoulders, pike heels, low plank, abrupt elbow bend, upward dog, super long ankles. Downward dog, your chin is chasing your chest, Chest is chasing pubic bone. Pubic bone is insisting that the feet flip over. Flat back, don't stop. Fold down, belly goes up, arms fall. Keep belly up, keep dangling arms and roll. Slip hips beneath you, spread hands, spread front of hips as you circle up. Push your chest into the room, swan dive down. Feel the moment when the knees have to bend to make it all available. Flat back, pike heels, open chest, low plank, upward, nice hamstring pumps, downward dog, flat back, don't stop. Two more times with little add-ons, forward folds, dangly arms, roll up, open hips, hands fan open, reach up. Push yourself down, know when to muscle the belly even greater and bend the legs. Flat back, lift heels, and then take your crow pose from here. I'll wiggle around for space. Your hands land, but the shins are already slicked up. Your butt is up, keep it that way. The knees will have to buckle a bit to get the legs onto the arms. Look ahead of your hands. Pump your hamstrings with the same effort that you might have come across to stall those three-legged dogs, those flips, those flip outs. Think of that here, have control in the toes, have bend in the fingers. If you can, straighten the arms. Long steps are a shot back into a low plank. 
Up dog, this is the hamstring pump. Down dog. Last one, flat back. Fold down. Roll up. And then we'll stay in this next downward dog. Do take one more crow. From your flat back. We'll start this, this flow with a flip. Right leg stretches up high, hip crease opens, knee bends. Remember the cueing to pull your whole back forward. Witness that left heel tip out, get light in the right hand. Just as much as control, but a little bit faster. Ooh, you flip. And then much fancier, you're pulling around a three-legged dog. Three-legged dog will become your knee to armpit. Look at your hands, drag that knee wide, take it up to your armpit, stay here, or you can bend the elbows back and stretch the left toes up for an arm balance. Tap the left foot down, take one more three-legged dock. Bring your knee up to your armpit. And now back out a little bit, shrug your chin in, center that knee, step your foot, roll the crescent lunge. The repeats are going to happen here. My left leg is already pretty straight. Push down through the back heel. As soon as the arm go overhead, let the right arm drop down. Scoop that arm down towards the floor. Feel the, almost the guy wire that pulls the left armpit, left shoulder blade down to stand this right hand up. Keep the right hand high with the left heel. Sort out your reverse warrior. Left hand goes down back leg. Walk to your right toes. And then half moon pose, bend your right arm, really treat it like this dagger like force. You pull forward, pointy right knee, pointy right elbow, bend your knee beyond your ankle. Look down, light hands, squeeze from the left inner thigh and, inner thigh and the left big toe. And then this right knee is the last thing to straighten. You could have a block under this right hand. The left hand can stay occupied on the hip the whole time. Do not forget the way that you already had your left thigh lifted in the side plank that you started to prime the body with. Roll your chest open. Stay or reach. And then bend your right knee a lot. Shift your gaze down. Get this low to the floor. So you're just flirting with that left foot and then stretch out the left toes, find your reverse warrior really quietly. Bend your right arm again, let it land hard onto that front, front thigh. Your forearm meets the bent leg, left arm takes a side angle stretch. The side angle stretch is mocking the, the good side body stretch that you achieved in those side planks in the beginning. You now have a really good benefit of a grounded left pinky side of foot. Look down, place your right hand onto your right one so you're in prayer. Your butt stays low. Think of your torso as a cement mixer, the rib cage moving in a round way around the spine. As you look down, begin to point your fingers towards your front foot. Unplug the left heel. As your left hip moves forward, you find a place to fix your left elbow to the outside of your front leg. You'll be crowded right here, you're slouched. And then pull your belly in as you really exaggerate your right shoulder back and down. Dip your right elbow down, your crescent twist, of course. Letting the eyes go up will challenge you. This left hamstring is still pumped up and a little bit back. Left, left heel is defined. Slow and steady to reverse warrior. So many things slow this. A lot of it is the hike of the left hamstring. It's the sit of the right butt. It's a lot of trust. You swivel, you feel the ability of your back ankle. Left heel gets heavy suddenly. Then you pump the right hand up, the right knee forward. 
Stay in extended side angle stretch. The back foot stays planted. Throw the right arm beyond the front leg. Left arm over your ear for three. Really open your chest for two. And then come down into a flow for one. Let your dangling hand pull you around. Your chest starts to shrink. See my left heel lift. Have sort of a round spine as you take your low plank. And then just fit the blades beneath your chest as you upward dog. Drag the fingers hard on the mat as you pull up and out to your downward dog. Left leg rises with tension, hip crease opens, knee bends, the hamstring is full. As you know, you translate your whole spinal column forward, pump your right heel up. As you tilt out onto the right heel, lift the left hand or tent it. Then slowly rhythm your way around. When you are here, your whole spinal column is farther in the front of your body. Your left knee is strong and long. You're pulling around to a knee to armpit. Look down, lift left heel. Let the left fingers dangle. You start to float that left leg up. You dance around onto the right toes. You stay kind of forward into the room. Haul your knee up. Arms are straight. If you're taking the arm balance, arms are bent. Bend them like chaturanga. Float the right foot like this. Right toes down. Three-legged dog with control. Squeeze your fingers. Stick the left leg up. Do your knee to armpit again. Let your eyes go forward. And then to turn it into a knee to nose, tuck your chin back out. Pull your knee up. Step your foot, crescent lunge. You arrive with a straight, strong right leg. Maybe you walk into the left toes. Left arm goes down to the mat, the right arm stays up. Like you're picking something off of the floor, that left hand scoops. And there is this little line, this tension line that pulls the right shoulder blade down to get you stacked back up. The left hand stays, the right arm, the right heel do this really great twirl into your reverse warrior. Walk into that left leg, feel deep in this front hip. Half moon on this side, super slow entry. Bend your left arm, your left knee keeps bending as you lean forward. The back leg starts to take over here. Skim the right toes along the floor. Your left hand is planted now. And then hop the heel up. This left leg has become straight. Let something happen in this right butt. So it should lift enough until there's sensation. <clears throat> Roll your chest open. Stay with hand at hip or extend your arm up. Half moon. Look down, get incredibly low to the floor. Use control for the most quiet reverse warrior. Your, your left knee buckles, your right leg is flirting with the mat. Let the right toe dip down, then seal the right heel, take a reverse warrior. And then without dwelling on it, you just learn this left dip, left hip depth, and you go right into your side angle stretch, bent forearm. Open chest, a wrap of this right tricep. Think of that concept, that, uh, that visual of the, the cement mixer torso. Look at your left open hand, plant the right hand on top. The pointed fingers can start to turn forward. Eventually the right heel will know how to lift up. You slouch in your first moment of your crescent twist. So your chest is down, the right elbow is sorting it out. So you can look at me for a second. And then from those chest and fingers pointed down, you get a really demanding roll back of the left shoulder. Your eyes will naturally change. The higher up they are, the more challenging it is. At any moment, you, cap, you gap your left, your left belly, especially, I suppose, higher away from your bent leg. And slowly to reverse warrior. 
the arm slow you down, patient slows you down, the right foot is moving right now. Seal that back heel in, yawn at the left body. Stay in extended side, on, side angle stretch. Throw the left arm beyond the front leg, right arm over your ear. Adjust so that the right toes are forward, right kneecap is squeezed for three. I'm trying to roll myself open and up, thinking of that cement mixer for two. And then I think of the cement mixer as I go out. Fingers down, curve right armpit, pull into a flow or go to downward dog. Just so I fit into the screen, I'll back up. Find another squat at the top of your mat. Heavy elbows, heavy collarbones, heavy earlobes. So your hips are, you're cueing your hips less. You're letting them do their own thing. Letting the dust settle. Touch fingertips down, stick your butt up, wiggle your feet together, bend your legs and fold. Bend your knees in rather close to your face. When your knees go forward, let your butt go down, roll into chair. Palms face in, the elbows try to wing in. Touch the hands together. It doesn't have to be a per perfect angle above you, but there's a seal of the hands. Let your butt go back, diving board the fingers forward. Take a left-sided twist, or excuse me, twist to the right. It's your left arm be beneath you. The right shoulder and elbow are strong above you. That right armpit is almost fanning the air, digging the humi humidity down. The left belly is part of that uh, cement mixer, pulling tissue from the left hip to the right shoulder, right collarbone. We're keeping the heat together. This is really the home stretch. Look down, get straight in the legs, take a quick fold. chair and of course your chair twist get that nice tricep wrap once the hands seal stick your butt out and out of it fingers far forward you're stretched apart you pull everything back together as your guts hide that teardrop right arm under you're twisting left the left shoulder and left hand are on top change your eyes accordingly Standing forward folds. Widen your stance. I will take gorilla. You can take gorilla or you can hook your big toes if you'd rather not step directly onto the hands just yet. Toes hit the wrist line. Mini flat back pose. Focus your eyes. Squeeze your elbows. Bend your legs. Bend your arms. Fold down. Keep a long neck. So that means you must still engage low shoulders. The more weight in your toes, the better. So you're not being too demanding on the points of your hips or the backs of your knees. Forward weight will remedy some of that. Tiny mini flat back pose, just enough to straighten the forearms. Walk your hands out, waddle your feet together. Your side crow, bend into your legs, roll into your chair. Swimming board or diving board the fingers forward, twist to the right first. Get that clean shoulder roll back, belly's rolling up. You can look down for balance and security, lift your heels, bend your knees towards the front of the room, sit your butt towards your heels. And here you can see if that left knee is poking forward, really shrug both hips back, get the hands, the wrists pretty low. 
This is most definitely a balanced pose already, just being up on the toes. You can stay, <clears throat> excuse me, stay, or if you're taking side crow, open the hands. So your knees are still forward, your ass is still back, your hands are open, kind of like chaturanga. Let your chest go down, your toes and your butt lift up, like this. So you can have both elbows poking into the side of that outer leg, which is your right leg. Or for me, I just have my, my left elbow holding things up. That seems to work okay. Different for wherever you are. Find the little toe prints. And then just discreetly on your own, roll into your standing forward fold. And then without, without breaking it, we'll keep the heat up as we roll into chair. Diving board into the chair twist, so your right arm is under you. It's a leftward twist, like so. And then you deepen the twist. You have to break the pose first. When your heels come up, it gives you the slack to be able to bend your knees forward and sit down. You stay twisted. This could most definitely be your pose. Breathe in place or spread the hands. Your left elbow is hard. Your right one is attached to your leg. You might have both elbows weaseled in onto the outside of that thigh. Look down, tilt down, flick toes up. Fingers are bent, elbows are bent. Standing forward fold. Tabletop. From tabletop, come into a kneeling cat pose. Bring your hips onto your heels. Keep the spirit of cat in your upper spine. Your hands grab hold of your knees. So you should be fingertip down. Your butt is under you. Keep your chin tucked. Stick your butt out. Your belly is going to spill forward. Your hands will break off of their current grip. They half circle low to the ground to grab your back. Really be big about your elbows as you peel your chest open. Fingertips are down. You do have your head up at this point. Start it from your back and pull your butt down manually with your hands. Feel your belly corset in. Your ribs do a corset as well. Hands will break free. Grab your knees. The throat swallows in. The arms are straight. Stick your butt out, let the hands wave around in that half circle, your belly spills, your chest pumps. Once you're hanging on to the low back, fix your elbows up, open your chest. One more time. Keep your head up, manually pull your butt down, you can see the storm outside. Ribs shrug down and in, grab your knees. And then last time, swivel the hands around to grab your low back. So this is cow shape. Your butt is disintegrated and stuck out. Your elbows are down. You can watch before you do. You're moving into camel pose with the hands exactly where they are. Right now your butt is stuck out. Kind of play with that as an advantage to help you swim up. So with your butt largely stuck out at this exact moment, stand stronger onto the shin bones. You can actually manually scoop your butt under you as you stand up taller so your thighs will go forward. Your hands are in a good place to keep pulling your butt down. In my body I'm going to gap the feet a little bit and then roll my chest open. My eyes scan up. There shouldn't be any, any major wrinkles on the back of your neck. And tuck your chin so that your torso stacks back up. In a very neutral way just sit back down to your heels. To be a little bit more profound about what you can do and manipulate with your tailbone, let's use um, fists. Put the fists more in the center of the low back. Similar thing, less of a butt sticking out right now, but just stand up, go back to where you were. You can swim your hips forward and use the, knuckle, the knuckles, the fists to knock your butt down. Your thighs should be stacked, so I shouldn't be stuck forward or laid back. Press your tail down, pin the elbows tighter together. And tuck your chin so that your neck comes up. Sit back down. Repeat that if that's quite a challenge for you. Or tuck your toes. 
from tucked toes, grab onto your heels. And then you know where you're going from here, your full camel pose. Arm, back of the arms are tight. Again, your hips should not be ahead of the knees or behind them. You're stacked. If and only if this is no sweat and you can manage and not compromise anything, you could untuck the toes. Very much a maybe. And we'll sit back down. Tight throat. Shrink the belly in. <sighs> And this is meant to be a warm practice, so nothing very fancy for the cool down. Let's go right into a butterfly. Soles of the feet together. Hang on to the heels, or sorry, you can hang on to the ankles or wrap around the feet. Chest up. And then a whole lot exactly like a swan dive. You come up and forward. Elbows will do the work. Toes stick out, outer knees are weighted. Pull your butt down, squeeze your belly up, roll yourself back up to surface. At home, you can play with timing. You could definitely hold that longer. Bring the knees together. We'll do a grounded figure four first. So lay onto your back, cross your right ankle over your bent left leg. Keep that left foot on the floor. Let your head go down to your mat. Let the heels of your hands dig into your upper thighs. Push your thighs absolutely away from you towards the wall that's directly in front of you. Once you've gotten that away push, also have a secondary angle of pulling your hip skin up towards your ends of your knees. Implement this decompression of the hips and then do take your traditional figure four unless you're happy to stay down. If you're at home, you can most definitely stay. Let's ground the feet. The right foot stays down, left ankle crosses. The heels of your hand shove the whole thigh bones absolutely away from you. And then there's that more manipulative, manipulative angle of pulling the skin of the hips to the knee ends. You implement, you feel this decompression, you remember it, you could stay grounded or grab onto the right hamstring. The left elbow becomes a great shaper and pusher of your left leg at figure four. Stay if you need to stay. Happy baby is next for your release. And then find Shavasana. Take as much or as little Shavasana as you need. I hope you enjoy deep flow. Have a great day. Thanks for practicing with me.